Hello, I'm Mr McCready. I'm the only RMPS teacher at Dunoon Grammar School now, so I cover all of the SQA courses. Uh, if you, by the end of this PowerPoint, if you want to contact me, my details are there below if you have any questions. Now, a couple of years back, I went and did some a blacksmithing course for a day, and I think it's a great metaphor when I'm thinking of pupils, because pupils are like the metal that we as teachers are trying to forge into being exam ready. Now, a really important key point is pupils really need to be in class, which is very much like being in the forge to get up to temperature and then being on the anvil while that they are being shaped into being exam ready. So from pupils taking trips away during term time and things like that, I'm not doing that with my own children. I've got a boy in S5 and sitting his exams. So there'll be no holidays this year because I'm focusing primarily on making sure that he is exam ready. Uh, so for yourself, I would give it really a second thought before you consider taking your son or daughter out during term time to give them a, a holiday, because playing catch up is really, really a poor substitute for being there because they're missing out on the discussions and discussion is a really significant portion of our MPS at any level. Now, perspective is everything within the subject. Pupils are expected to learn several perspectives on one topic area. So, for example, when we are studying religion and conflict, they would be looking at what is happening in the, the Ukrainian conflict, and they would be looking to see it from both a NATO perspective, but also from a Russian perspective to un see if they can understand why and why that the war is taking place. Now, in order to do this and to get a broader perspective, it's really advisable that they watch different news sources because they all give different perspectives, having their own biases. So the ones that I would utilise would be BBC, Russia Today, Al Jazeera News, Fox News. And you can also find others that I've not mentioned here, like the UK Column, giving a very different perspective than the mainstream media. So check out the news stories. This is where that they will get examples that they will utilize in their exam questions uh, because examples are exceptionally important to be able to explain what they are saying. Now, quotes, here's a fantastic quote. You can no more win a war than you can win an earthquake by Jeanette Rankin. Now, in context, this could be utilised in an argument, say, for example, with pacifism versus warfare. And a quote sourced and used well can gain extra marks in the final exam. Uh, quotes on warfare can be used in general concerning the warfare section of the course. Christianity is the world religion that we're doing. And from there, you could get quotes from the Bible. And the last section of the course is on origins. We'll be looking at the Big Bang and also creation and evolution. So we'll be looking at the debates. So you might want to get maybe a quote from Charles Darwin. Uh, you might want to get quotes from the Bible or other religious texts. Use the back of your jotter, save your quotes throughout the year, practice putting, utilizing them in past paper questions so that you're actually getting your three, say three quotes for each section would be about all that you would typically use in an exam. So that would be like nine quotes over the year. And if you can get your best ones in practice using them in context, so that when it comes to the exam, you've already had some practice using them in context in past paper questions. Now, the amazing thing is that during the exam, no, you cannot get 21 marks out of a 20 mark question. However, if you got 16 marks and you put in a good quote, it could be moved up to 17 marks. So you do get extra marks for using quotes accurately. So they are definitely worth their weight in gold. What I would say is that I 
do not offer supported study to pupils. I'll make them aware of that and from the beginning of the year encourage them to take responsibility for their own learning because as a teacher you can take a horse to water but you cannot make it drink. You need to encourage the pupils to take responsibility for their own learning because I cannot set the exam for them and if they start taking responsibility for their own learning early on in the course they will do far far better because it's really about turning up to the course mentally as well as physically and that is taking responsibility for their own learning is really engaging with the subject and getting involved in classroom debates and taking charge of when they have finished the week have a look at their notes see if they have to actually go over some of their notes make a few extra notes to clarify what they meant at the time because several months later they will not necessarily remember now one of the main skills in the course is actually about having knowledge and understanding that is for example it might be knowing the different types of pacifism demonstrating that you understand them from na uh, national five i would think of that as a little bit more like pub quiz sort of level knowledge going on into higher to mastermind where there is more complexity in some of the knowledge that they have to understand but the great thing is is by having strong knowledge and knowing your onions about the course you can actually get a very very significant proportion of your marks there at least at the very least 50 percent of your marks so technically you can still come away with a c in an exam without even using analysis and evaluation if you maximize your knowledge and understanding and knowing the content of the course A second skill is having analysis and learning to utilize analytical thinking. So, for example, that would be explaining. In English and RMPS, we would use uh, an acronym such as PEEL, which is make your point, explain it, give an example, and link it back to the question. So, the analysis can be showing that you understand different things. So, for example, it might be showing that you can understand the belief in the death of Jesus on the cross and the practice of the Eucharist, which is Holy Communion or also known as the Lord's Supper. And that is being able to synthesize your thinking. You're showing that you understand that the body of Jesus is represented by the bread. The blood of Jesus is represented by the wine and you're synthesizing your thinking, connecting different parts of the course. So this involves not only explaining facts, but demonstrating the implications for them. So, for example, we might think the implications of the bread is just as the bre a bread, a loaf is made up of many grains, the kingdom of God is made up of many people. And that means for a Christian, by participating in taking communion, you would be showing that you're wanting to participate, not only remember what happened, in Jesus's life, death and resurrection, but that you want to participate in the kingdom of God as well. And the consequences of these facts might be that by participating in the kingdom of God, you feel more part of what is going on and you're showing these consequences for the person. They may feel more connected to their faith and it strengthens them in their faith. These skills of analysing questions and understanding the implications, the consequences and different views may well be like understanding a liberal Christian view which takes things much more metaphorically versus a literal view uh, where it is as it says in the tin you believe it literally was six days of creation rather than maybe six eras of time like a liberal person might approach the Genesis text. A third skill would be using evaluation that is really being able to evaluate it so i myself i drive a picasso and when I'm, i use that as an example in class i may talk about the strengths of it how it has absolute massive book capacity how that you can take the seats out and it almost turns into a minivan for going up to ikea to get stuff to bring home However, there's also weaknesses. It is a nightmare to reverse out of a parking spot in a car park because it's got the steering 
the turning steering of like an aircraft carrier. So there's a little bit of evaluation showing a strength and a weakness of a car. They have to look at the strengths and the weaknesses of the various views and opinions that they are learning and the arguments that they're looking, they're wanting to know the for and against. These are skills that they need to get a lot of practice on. Now, using the resources available, here I've put a picture in this page of a YouTube video that I would recommend that you get your son or daughter to watch because there's a teacher there from Forth Valley in West Lothian who has went into absolutely every detail of what the SQA have to show on paper one, paper two. It lasts 37 minutes long. So if you want to know all of the excess details, they are outlined there. However, what I would say is all PowerPoints that are utilized in the classroom will be put onto the GLOW present, uh, will be put in the GLOW classroom. So upon completion, I don't generally put them up before we've done them because pupils try, sometimes try to get ahead of where we're at and it causes a little bit of confusion. There are also the subject pages for the SQA. I would recommend that pupils spend time looking over past papers and the marking schemes to learn how the SQA mark. In conclusion, what I would also say is that study time for pupils, I would recommend between now and Christmas at National Five, a minimum of one hour a week. And for those at higher, an hour and a half per week, studying and revising over work already done, that would be on top of homework. Uh, after Christmas, I would recommend pupils going up to National Five about two hours a week and for higher up to three hours a week revision specifically for the subject and that is on top of homework. Make yourself a study timetable to be able to measure for yourself that you're not putting too much work into one subject and neglecting another make sure that you're covering your exams uh, equally. If as parents that you have any questions for me, feel free to email or also uh, call the school if you need to and leave a message for me. Thank you very much.